Hey, my name is Diego. I'm a stylist pro artist from Spain, also known as Zafiku on every social media. Today, I have been invited to the stylist station to search the process of my last project in Unreal Engine, the Sword Temple. Keep in mind this video will be a breakdown of the whole process more than a tutorial, to be used as a guide if you want to create something similar for portfolio or other purposes. I will show you clear and briefly how I was working on every stage, and I will share with you some tips that I think can be useful as well. Let's take a look. Every great project starts with a nice looking concept. First, I look for the one I like the most. After that I take a look at some references I can use in order to achieve the look of the concept, keeping in mind the style, props, lighting and mood. Websites that I usually use for that are ArtStation, Pinterest and social media. To gather all the references in one place I always use Pure Ref. After all the reference work is done, I always start with creating some blockout assets to put in the scene and measure the size and shapes together. See what will work or require special attention later. The most time I spend on are the main assets that will be the focal point, and I build the scene around them. I mostly work with 3ds Max and Blender. If you never touch a 3D program before, I can recommend you to start with Blender. Inside Unreal, you can also play with the basic shapes the program offers and try out the editing brush tab to get a bit more complex shapes. Set a few general lights and start to create the atmosphere. This will help you get a first impression of your environment. When I decide that everything is set more or less and I have a clear idea of the assets I need to achieve the style, it is time to polish those assets to get the desired result. You can create everything in the progress I mentioned before or you can try to sculpt the details in Zubras as well. This will depend on the result you want to get. In order to achieve the sculpted style as results, I strongly recommend the Ors Brush Pack by Michael Vicente. He offers the pack for free for both Zubras and Blender. You can take a look at ArtStation learning tutorials and see Classroom to handle this part much better. An environment is not only a bunch of assets put in together in the same place. If you want to work later on the texture of the assets properly, maybe add some animation, etc., you will have to prepare a good topology in order to have optimized props. If you are working with sculpt high poly and the only purpose of your scene is just a render, you can do that automatically with tools like CRMesh inside ZBrush. But to get more optimized or get ready results, I normally work with 3D code. Here I can import my high poly mesh and start working on top of that to create the same version, but in low poly. Later I bake the high poly onto the low poly and I basically get the same asset but much more optimized. Moving into the texture part, I love to work with Substance Painter to create a specific texture maps for every asset. But with Substance Designer I can create tillable textures maps that are handy for other situations. For example, I did some from the ground, rocks and wood to generate variations of the same mesh. I was following the tutorials of Stylus Station for this part of the project. You can add more to this with the official tutorials of Substance Painter and Designer. With everything modeled and painted, I move into Unreal Engine and I check if all the maps are working or require some fixes. This is where the magic starts, let's take a look at all the stuff I work on. I started creating the materials using my textures. In this step, I can do several extra things inside the material window in order to create useful effects, such as moves, banners, color variations, and much more. In my case, I was using the warp position offset with simple grass wind nodes for the plants to make them move slightly, trying to recreate the wind force. Using a similar process of mixing nodes and textures, I created some shaders for the grass and the water. A shader is basically a fusion between code and textures. Take a look at these tutorials if you want to know more about them. Now it's time to work more on lighting. We have two ways to do this part, baked lights or movable lights. I use movable lights for this scene to work faster since this environment was designed for rendered purposes only. Baked lights are more optimized for performance, but you will have to take care of the light map resolutions, the baking process and so on. Some lights are more expensive than others when it comes to performance. For example, a spotlight is 6 times less expensive than a point light. 
Another extra tip here is to uncheck cast shadows on all those lights that are just to illuminate some areas without need to project shadows. Moving deeper into the digital magic part, let's talk about the RFX. I'm a big fan of the Niagara system inside Unreal. I started working with the default sparks to create the fireflies, but not only that, I also did the fog just increasing the size of the particles, reducing the opacity and the spawn. If you wonder how I did the gold rate, again the same, reduce the spawn rate, make the size much bigger for the Y than the X axis, and change the color a bit. And voila, you have now three different effects just using the same particle emitter. Decals are important as well. With this I create an extra layer of texture about the existing one that is already set on my model. I added some moss decals for example. To improve the performance a bit more I generate auto lots. This basically tessellates and reduces the poly count for every asset starting from a set distance to the camera. For this example in my scene I use the small prop option and it set it to automatic. I can show you also in the viewport how this works. Alright, everything is set and ready to be rendered. The easiest and fastest way to do so is from Unreal, just getting the high resolution screenshot. If you want to work in a cinematic render, I highly recommend using Sequencer, another tool inside Unreal. With this, you can set the camera's smooth moves, banners, effects, etc. There are also plugins to improve the quality in case you require something more advanced, like rendering as PNG sequences. With your renders exported, it is time to prepare a cool presentation for your art station and social media. Take your time with this part, showcasing your project properly is what will get people to look at your work. Share the link of your presentation with friends and Discord servers like Silas Station to get feedback for future projects in order to continue developing your skills and learn from your mistakes. Remember that no one knows everything out of nowhere. Use the internet to learn all the parts you don't understand yet or you want to master. Special thanks to all the people that create amazing tutorials on the internet, Stylus Station for inviting me today, and to all of you for watching this video. You can follow me on my social media if you want to see more about my future projects. Feel free to write me anytime for feedback or help. Join the server of Stylus Station to see all the new content coming. Take care and see you around.